For our more on today's historic election, we turn to Nancy Youssef, reporting from Cairo for McClatchy Newspapers. I spoke to her a short while ago. Nancy Youssef, good to see you. So tell me what struck you that you saw at the polls today. Well, I think the most remarkable thing was how um, unpredictable the selection is. At every polling station, we found um, different candidates um, in the lead uh, for surprising reasons. In poor areas, we visited in Cairo um, people who we thought would have supported the Muslim Brotherhood candidate, Mohammed Morsi, and said, said they supported Ahmed Shafiq, who was a regime prime minister, the last one under Mubarak. Um, which suggests to us that in some areas, rather than having an Islamist state, what people are really seeking is, is security. So we are, we're at the end of day one and with no sense of who's in the lead, who's in second place, and, and what's even really driving voters uh, to the polls. Were the lines long? The lines were long, but was, was the turnout high? Do we know? Well, the early estimates we've received from the Election Commission is 60%. Um, it seems to be a guess at this point, which is as uh, lower than it was during the parliamentary elections. Uh, so in, in that sense, it was lower than, ex than expected. Uh, so we'll see if day two proves to be better. One of the differences between the parliamentary election and this one is that voters had the days off as holidays during uh, the parliamentary elections. Uh, today was a working day, and so a lot of people couldn't come out until after uh, 4 or 5 o'clock, and the polls closed at 9 today. The government has declared tomorrow a holiday, so that may change voter turnout. We might see more people come out that, that couldn't come out today. Was, was the voting emotional for people who haven't had the chance to do this ever? It, it was incredibly emotional for, uh, for the voters that we talked to. Even, even the most uh, jaded were, were moved by the whole process. We, we saw people sort of tap the ballot as a, for good luck, and we saw people get emotional and cry. We saw people tear up. Remember, these, this is a whole country that's never even, even had the option to consider choosing its own president, and today had 13 candidates to choose from. Um, you could see you could see that see it in their faces. Really, just the shock at, that this day had, had had come just 15 months after the revolution, and so you, you couldn't escape the emotions. Um, and, and they and they 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 rose up and sort of in every polling place we went to, no matter the candidate um, and no matter the circumstances, people who were doing very well post-revolution but were still sort of um, shocked at the prospect of voting, and people who had really had hope that. Uh, the revolution would, would, would improve their lives in some way and, in fact, suffered um, since the revolution, either through a loss of job or an, um, uh, increased food prices and whatnot. So uh, every person I talked to had, had something to say about how moved they were about the process, about having the option to, to check off uh, a name and drop the ballot box drop the ballot in, in the box themselves. Nancy, with the Muslim Brotherhood as one choice, the military ruling council as another choice, does this boil down to a vote for change versus stability? Yes and no. I, I, I think it's, it's a choice of where you want the country to go in the future. It's, it's in a way, um, a, a vote on the Muslim Brotherhood and how well you think they have or have not performed in the parliament. Um, it's, it's a vote on whether you think the, that Egypt has gone, undergone too much change and has become too unstable or, in fact, hasn't done enough change and needs, and needs to do more. Uh, it, there's a whole mosaic of factors that kind of come into play in terms of what's bringing this together. But at the most basic level, yes, it's, it's a choice between those who believe that, that Islam should be a guiding principle and that, that an Islamic um, uh, candidate can, can bring about the kind of change that, that the revolution had promised and, and those who think that, that that too much change has happened in too short a period and that what the country needs right now is stability and a leader with experience who can guide it to, so that, the, so that the, the change that, that everybody sought 15 months ago actually happens in a productive, um, healthy way for the country. And finally, Nancy, were there any irregularities uh, reported in today's voting like we saw during the parliamentary elections? It was much better than the parliamentary elections. In those elections, there were, there were um, delegates out for the various um, parties electioneering right in front of the polling stations. We didn't see that nearly as much. There were sort of peppered violations here and there. My, my own sense was in visiting, I visited about a half a dozen polling centers today, was that the biggest irregularity was that people didn't know that the judges in charge of the elections how to actually administer it. And so each election was administered a little bit differently in each of the six places that I visited today. Um, the, other, the other surprising thing that we saw is uh, people just didn't know who to vote for. With so many women I, I saw today that kept asking and looking around to the election workers and saying, who do I vote for or who do I vote for? And we're just 
almost overwhelmed by the prospect of, of having the choice. And so there was a lot of effort to make sure that election workers weren't in any way communicating with the voters because that would, that would have been a violation. Remember, there were delegates from each of the campaigns um, at, at the polling centers, and all but one had people sitting there monitoring, monitoring the process. So there seemed to be a, a vast improvement fr from, the, from the parliamentary elections. Nancy Youssef reporting from Cairo for McClatchy Newspapers. Thanks so much. Thank you. Online, you can view photos of Egypt's momentous vote today and an interview with a Global Post reporter in Cairo about how events unfolded. That's on our world page.